um, uh, something uh, I would say easy, which is uh, immersion We're in recording. games. Oh, I guess I should have started. We're we're recording. You're recorded. My bad. Yeah, you're good. no, we're we're going. We're live. Just making sure. Yeah, okay, we're live. Okay. All right, you're good. Um. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, everyone has experienced some kind of immersion. If if you played games, um, especially, uh, m- more like the bigger AAA games, right? It's that, it's that feeling of, of of like totally forgetting that you're playing the game, right? That you're just kind of engulfed into the game. You don't even, you, you know, you're playing a game, but you don't care what's going on in the in the real world, right? It's it's that kind of feeling. Um, and so we're gonna talk. We're gonna try to uh, talk about that try to define immersion um, and, and then kind of also explore some different questions. So how this is going to work is uh, really this this whole meeting is meant to be a discussion. Um, so I, I'm going to talk about immersion for like 10, 15 minutes, just so everyone's kind of on the same page and uh, everyone has a kind of base, base understanding of, of what we're going to talk about. Uh, and then we're going to go into a discussion. Uh, since there's a lot of people in this call, uh, we're gonna break up into breakout rooms, I, which I we think will be better uh, because talking in a large group, uh, but it, it's just much easier to talk in a small group. Uh, yes, and um, what else was I gonna say? Yeah, uh, don't you know? Don't feel like you have to talk all the time. I, I know discussion can be intimidating, and I've been in discussions where like I don't know much about this subject um so you know don't worry about it. we're gonna go you know every design talk is going to be kind of a different topic so one topic you might know really well others might not know too much about uh so uh yeah i just want to put that out there um yeah and then so i'm gonna do a presentation where i talk um i think the plan is that once i'm done with my um once i'm done presenting uh we will we'll have a optional like come back together in the main room if, if you want um i i know it's hard to bring people back into a main room after discussion so uh once an hour has passed you know you guys are free to kind of stay talking in your breakout rooms or you know, it's, it's an hour and you want to leave, you're welcome to come back to the main room, kind of check in and, and just dip. Um, you're also welcome to leave whenever. Um, okay. Um, is there anything we want to talk about, Edward, for next week? Um, oh, announcements for next week? Sure. Yeah, because it, it, we may not have, like, a definite ending. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah. um... I know a lot of people here are either like new or returning and um, get club members. So for the returning members, I'm sure you've made like a lot of progress on like games you've been developing. And for new people, I'm sure there's a lot of interest into learning like what type of games people are developing. So for both parties, um, we're planning to do a showcasing event next week. Um, this event is open for people basically to present like whatever games they are either developing or have developed it's really just like a like a celebration of like what we've what people have done um so you know i know some people here came from like global game jam for example if you want you can like present something like that or you can present any personal projects we'll have like a sign up sheet posted probably like sometime real soon i'll just say that and Basically, this will be our first showcasing. I alluded to it during the info meeting, and we'll have a more formalized announcement about it later on. But it's just an opportunity for you guys to kind of like show off your games and just, you know, share what people have been doing. So it's usually really fun, really um, casual and chill. So I look forward to that next week, the 18th. Cool. Show off your game, even if it's in progress. <laughs> okay. Cool, I'm gonna go ahead and start then. All right. 
So, um, there's, there's like, uh, I, I would say like four main kind of ways people have categorized uh, uh, immersion games, like what kind of genres. Um, and some of these you, you, games you might have played before, these are games I'm kind of familiar with, um, and you feel free to like um, bring in more examples later. Uh, but so when we're talking about games, uh, usually they fall into these kind of four categories, and that's immersive sims. So those are games um, where the the immersion, the games that have a lot of systems in them, um, uh, these kind of interconnecting systems uh, that kind of give you that feeling that you know whatever this this system in it feels alive and real, and you know there's so many ways I can interact with it. Um, and so that's an immersive, immersive simulation, immersive, immersive sim. I have Deus Ex and Bioshock as examples. Um, I have immersive games. Um, this might be a little too vague of a uh, 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 category, but um, these are ones that were just kind of are games where uh, the main uh, appeal of it is is because it it tries to be immersive. So um, you know, the games like Metro, uh, especially like the, the recent one that came out, Metro Exodus, um, where the kind of, the idea is you're in this you're in this post-apocalyptic kind of Russia. It's ice cold, and um, all the mechanics around it are are kind of supporting all the mechanics and challenges are supporting the fact that you're in this harsh world. Um, Far Cry Two kind of did that too, uh, uh, where you can get like malaria. Uh, you know, so there's like kind of these challenges, these these um, hurdances, or I don't even know if it's a word, but challenges that kind of put you in this immersive kind of world. Um, open world games. So these are games where the immersion is like th the world is so large, you can kind of go anywhere. It's got like a real history. Um, it, yeah, I, I guess that's what it would be like. Uh, and so, it, you know the story is is really good too, uh, which comes into immersive stories where like you feel so immersed into the story and you're just like you're just hooked. <laughs> so I, I guess that kind of brings the question. So if if you kind of can categorize that, well, um, that, that brings us to like, well, how do you actually create it? Um, and I have kind of a vague uh, uh, kind of definition of of like or process of how you would do that. And, you know, what you could say is, well, you really are creating an alternative representation of reality in the player's mind. It's it's that feeling of, like, this place is real, um, or, like, I'm I'm really into this place, or this place is real. It's kind of a alternate reality in a way. Um, and then, of course, you have to, once you kind of build up that representation through design and, and flow and the mechanics like flow is kind of the the balance between being bored and and too challenged um kind of and in game events you kind of bring them into that alternate reality um and then you know you the designers will then have to try to preserve that sensation by not suspending your sense of sense of disbelief so i guess that's another way of kind of see how immersion is created it's the um it's that uh, what did I have? suspension of disbelief. Also, how do I word it? <laughs> the suspension of, of disbelief. Um, I guess also kind of brings another question though. Then is is presence the ultimate goal of immersion? Uh, so is it feeling like you're there, like feeling like you're really there, and everything feels really real? Is that what immersion is, or is that too fine tuned, or is that alienating other games, other types of immersive games. So that's a, it's a really important question that, that is in kind of, that has to do with immersion. Uh, oops. Uh, so I, I kind of categorize, I found four different types of, of immersions. Um, so first is like the, the sensory immersion. So. I have the, this controller, and that's like the your senses are, are kind of being immersed into uh, a game, for example. So 
um, like the PS5 controller has the vibrations and like so you're walking walking on pebbles. You, know, you kind of get the feeling that you're walking on pebbles. Um, there's also like through sound. Um, like maybe when you, I don't know if people have seen those videos where it's like someone like riding a bike through like raining Tokyo and the rain's really calming and you feel like you're kind of there because like the rain is, the rain feels really real and lots of videos so it's like real life. But um, sometimes that's kind of in games too, uh, where the weather feels real and uh, there's also like. It, you also think of sensory as, as what you see. So it's like, it looks realistic. It's like, oh my God, it's real. Um, also, you can see, um, see sensory immersion as like how characters act. Um, if they kind of, if their expression is really realistic, especially if you're playing like a third person game, which we'll see some examples of. Um, so it's not just like sight and um, smell or, or hearing. Uh, there's narrative immersion where you, you're it, the story is just really great and you can't stop reading it. <laughs> uh, there's also systematic immersion, uh, which is like the you're kind of walking into this system and everything feels like there's no flaws. Everything feels kind of connected together and you're just kind of thinking of all the different possibilities you can interact with this system. Um, and because of that complexity, you know, you're kind of, you're immersed into that. You're, um, uh, it's just like really amazing. Uh, and then lastly, you have world immersion, uh, which kind of builds off systematic immersion sometimes. Um, uh, but that's where, um, it also has to do with like open world games where like th this place is massive. Um, it has a history, it has a culture, um, you can just be exploring it forever. Uh, so I, I pulled up some examples of of how some games have used immersion, or how games how games have been immersive. Um, for instance, Metro and Dead Space use diegetic interfaces. So, um, does anyone know what diegetic means, or doesn't know what it means? Um, it's like when the uh, the interfaces a part of the world. It's not just like a thing that's overlaid in front on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for, I played Metro and this was a really cool part of it uh, where um, the, you're never like, so diegetic. Yeah, that's correct. Like it, it's talking about like in the game. So, you know, if you're playing a third person game, the character you see in the world is diegetic. It's in the game. Whereas if you pause the game and open up a main menu, that's non diegetic. Like that's like not actually in that world. <laughs> that's like a system interface. Um, same Can thing when you're, question? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So when you say diegetic, you mean like the difference between having a map overlay versus getting your character to actually pull up the map and then being able to interface it. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm getting at. Um, you're right. Like if you played like, uh, maybe like Ubisoft games, um, uh, you, when you pull up the map, you see a, a graphic. But it's that main that menu doesn't actually exist in the world. So one thing Metro Exodus does is, yeah. So this is a picture of like when you pull up a map, you you actually pull up this notebook, and you kind of all the markers are like marked in with like marker, um, and the game isn't paused. Uh, another th another thing is like. Uh, what I'll see often too, like in Dead Space, is um, I, I believe this is like your ammo or health, these lights. So as you're walking, um, you can you see how much ammo you have, you see how much health you have looking on these by these lights. Uh, and the idea is that it, this is kind of what I was kind of talking about, like immersive games, where it's like you're not. You're like fully into the into the game. Um, everything you're, all your information you're getting from the game world. Uh, that's why sometimes you'll see like some people like turning off all main menus to be fully immersed into the game. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's something. That's a really important tool to use. Uh, I'm sure people have 
I've seen some really good examples. Um, it's also a cool thing. I, uh, I never played uh, The Last of Us 2, but I did watch some Let's, like a Let's Play of it. And the animation was just phenomenal. It was like, it was seamless between like cutscenes and, and gameplay. And so even as I was playing, these kind of cinematic events would happen, but it was like so seamlessly with the gameplay and, and seeing that, um, you know, it makes the characters feel real. And this would probably be, um, this could probably be sensory immersion because immersion, like it's kind of what you're seeing. Um, and you're also kind of relating to these characters uh, with that really good animation. Uh, again, uh, I haven't played Red Dead, but I've also seen um, some people think it's too immersive or like taking it too far for like, you know, with all these like really great animation, it it's kind of becomes sometimes tedious. Some people have said, uh, you know, this is a picture of him, like cleaning your gun. And when you actually have to clean your gun, you have to clean it for real. Um, and I think that's also another cool uh, immersive mechanic where like uh, your weapons break over time. Um, yeah, like, or like you have to clean it or other, you know, or it will like break after a while. So it's like making you constantly think about your environment and, and yourself. Metro did that a lot too. Uh, that's a really good kind of immersive kind of technique as well. Uh, I brought in some examples of like, uh, uh, uh systematic immersion, uh, like in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, I have not played this game either, but uh, I try to find some examples because I know there was instances where like you could burn the ground, you know, the, the ground would light on fire and then enemies could like get catched on fire. And then I'm sure if rain came down, the, the fire would go away, you know, so it's like, right, that, that kind of realistic system is uh, just gets you hooked. I think this is a picture of, of Zelda throwing a boulder down, right? This, part of the environment and then kill these goblins. So. <laughs> uh, I, I realized I haven't played many um, immersive, immersive sims, so I so don't have to talk about that. This is the original DSX. OK, so that was uh, my presentation on immersion. Uh, I left you guys with some questions. Uh, that I thought could uh, jumpstart some conversation. Uh, the, the main question is still is, you know, maybe what is immersion, right? Did we kind of figure it out? Um, can we design it? How can we design it? Um, like, how can we create this effectively? Um, and then maybe um, I, I'm sure you guys know of, of some problems with being immersive, like maybe like and Red Dead Redemption, people say that's too immersive. So um, well, what does it mean to be too immersive? Uh, I think these are some important questions. OK. So I think it's now. time. Yes. Yeah, so it's, this is a huge room. Um, I think it's best if we split off. I agree. Okay, so this is kind of how I envisioned this going down, guys. So at this point, we've kind of given you some questions that maybe can jumpstart a conversation, like Cole just said. Um, what I've actually done is made a little flyer. This is basically a classroom exercise uh, just to get some conversations going. So we have these breakout rooms, if you can see. Right below the voice channels, there's like literally a category called breakout rooms. Can you guys see that? Just numbered one through seven. Oops. Am I, uh, yeah, can, uh yeah. that's viewable? Okay, perfect. So if you go ahead and check out general chat, we have the questions that can kind of start a conversation, but you can also like talk to each other about like, you know, whatever else, maybe majors, personal interests and stuff. As long as we're trying to just facilitate conversation. So what I have here is actually a form with 
some of you guys' Discord handles along with a number. And the number is basically the room that I'd ideally like oh. you to join. And then you guys can, like, you know, start talking about things. So if that, do I have any questions about that? You want me to keep recording when we go into the rooms? No. Yeah, okay. you can stop recording now. All right, stopping the recording. Yes, thanks.